Hello, Thrill Seekers. Welcome back to Bubba's Wonderland. So, we are here on Red Coat's Splashdown, which is one of the rides in our Phase 1, which we just completed in our last episodes. So, if you haven't looked at those, you can go ahead and uh, check those later. So, we're going to go ahead and work on our Phase 2. I put a pull in for you guys to choose what the next theme will be. So the results came out for sci-fi, so we're going to go ahead and start our phase two part of the park, which is going to have a sci-fi theme. So keep your hands in the air and hope you enjoy the ride. So we just have a pause here. We're going to start on our next phase, which is going to be over here. Plan on doing a phase over here, over here, and then bring them down. And then one that back down here on the back. So we're going to have to watch about this part down here because it is a lot lower. But uh, we'll look into that later. Before we do all that, I need to get some management stuff out of the way. So we had some research that we have finished. Let's go ahead and get these clicked off. So we have hotels. And we had our coffee shop. And then we had this other shop. Let's go ahead and start our some more research while we're building this stuff. We're going to have this shop right here. We have quite a bit of shops right now, so I'm not too worried about that. Got a couple of thrill rides right here. This one's smashing the atom. Uh, we might go ahead and research this. It might be something sci-fi. Right, let's see what else we have here. We have a track ride, which is Backbone of the West. We're not doing our West theme right now, but we'll go ahead and get this one out of the way. Cause who knows what's going to be behind it. And one more. We can do one of these roller coasters up here. I'm going to do the runaway coaster. See what that is when it comes up. Okay, let's look at our staff here. I want to make it so they, these staff stay in this area. So to do that, we're going to come up here and hit this plus button to add a roster. And then we could come over here to the staff and just add them to the roster. And then I also want to add another janitor because it looks like we got these two janitors are working their butts off. See, that one's tired, but their workload is very high. So we'll add us another janitor down here. We're going to need to move his area also. And I also want to add another security guard. So again, I was going to do the next phase over here, which is our sci-fi phase. It's what everybody voted on. And then we'll do a phase over here. Down here through the middle, I'm going to do more as a common area or just a general park. So I'm going to have the hotels, the restaurants, and then some just normal rides. And then we'll have another two sections this way. I don't know if we'll have another one this way. So that'd be... Two, three, four, five, six all together. But we'll have at least five. But again, once we get down into this, it might be a little different. So let's start on this park over here. I'm going to build a roller coaster. I think it's going to be the first part of this. So let me choose which roller coaster I want to pick. So I want to do a hyper coaster, especially the way that looks. It looks like a shuttle. So it's kind of sci fi to me. So we're going to bring it and put it this way. I'm going to bring it along, keep it along the edge back here. I'm not going to have it wrap around like this one does. But I do want to try to incorporate some of it into that up there. So let's put this right here. I'll change this station out and extend it some. And then we're going to do our lift hill here and then go from there. A hyper coaster is a roller coaster with a height or drop measuring at least 200 feet or 61 meters. The world's first hyper coaster was Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point, which featured a height of 205 feet or 62 meters. Cedar Point hired Aerodynamics for their design and construction beginning in 1988. Since its opening on May 6, 1989, Magnum XL200 has accommodated over 36 million riders. Cedar Point's official blog states that after building the ride, discussions was focused on just what a roller coaster such as Magnum should be called. After all, it had no loops, like most of the other large steel coasters of the time, and was so much bigger and faster than its non-looping brethren. After a couple of years, the name everyone agreed upon was Hypercoaster. The next Hypercoaster, Pepsi Max Big One, opened five years later at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, featuring a height of 213 feet or 65 meters. 
other roller coaster manufacturers may or may not have recognized the term hypercoaster when naming their models. Intamin calls their hypercoaster model a mega coaster. Eggman's first mega coaster was called Ride of Steel was located at Six Flags Darren Lake in New York. Also by the same name was one located in the Six Flags America in Maryland. In 2007, Darren Lake dropped the Superman from the name. Both coasters featured identical layouts opening one year apart beginning with Darren Lake installation in May of 1999 followed by the Six Flags America installation in May of 2000. They are 208 feet tall featuring a drop length of 205 feet and reaching a maximum speed of 73 miles per hour. Also in 2007, a third steel roller coaster with a completely different layout opened with the same name in Six Flags New England. It was renamed Superman the Ride in 2009. Bolliker and Maligard labels theirs a hypercoaster. BMM's first hypercoaster is Apollo's Chariot, located in Bush Gardens, Williamsburg, Virginia. It officially opened to the public March 27, 1999. The coaster is themed to a Greek and Roman god Apollo, who is the god of the sun, music, and healing. Apollo used his chariot to control the directions of the sun. The ride is 4,882 foot long and is characterized by eight airtime hills. The heights range between 49 and 131 feet. Riders ascend 170 feet on the chain lift hill before dropping 210 feet at the angles of 65 degrees. Apollo's Chariot has been well received, constantly ranking in the top 10 of the annual Golden Ticket Awards from Amusement Today. The competition between amusement parks to build increasingly taller roller coasters eventually led to the next height classification for roller coasters known as Giga Coasters, which have a height or drop measuring at least 300 feet or 91 meters. This was soon followed by the world's first Straga coasters exceeding 400 feet or 120 meters. So I ran a couple tests on it, had to fix a little bit over here of it. I fixed this part over here so it didn't actually go down underneath this one, it actually goes over and then back under. So it kind of ties this one in. I also had to get rid of one of the hills over here. So now it comes down, it's flat, and then we go back up. It was messing with them over here, but I think it uh, came out pretty good. We're going to run an actual test test for it, and then I'll start doing the decorations and everything around it. And here are the results for it. So everything's in the green, so it looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, decorate it and uh, all that stuff. Get the actual other train set up. These ratings will change once we actually get people to ride it instead of the test dummies. So far, our prestige is at 806. So let me go ahead and add the scenery and everything, and then we'll open this up and see what it looks like. Hyper coasters can be themed to a variety of stories. And some say that one of their features is the ability to customize to match a theme. For example, one YouTube video shows a hypercoaster themed to a raven flying through the air. When people think about sci-fi or space roller coasters, the first one that comes to mind is Space Mountain. Space Mountain is a space-themed indoor roller coaster attraction located at five of the six Disneyland parks. Although all five versions of the attraction are different in nature, all have a similar exterior fade that is a landmark for the respective park. The original Space Mountain Coaster opened in 1975 at Walt Disney World Resorts in Florida. 
There are two tracks within this attraction, Alpha and Omega, which passengers can choose from. Other versions of the attraction are built at all other Disney parks except for Shanghai and Disneyland Park. So let me know in the comments if you've been to any of the Space Mountain roller coasters. So I feel the Hyper Coaster makes a good space themed coaster because of the speed and the airtime that it has. I'm trying to make this one unique and different from anything that I've really seen before. So I hope you guys enjoy it and let me know what you guys think of it so far. All right, we got it all built up here. So I'm going to do one more test because I changed it a little bit so I could get this built up here. So we're inside a spaceship here. And then uh, this is kind of like the halfway in. So let's take a look at this, make sure everything's still running right, and then we'll set up the price for it. All right, here it is, Star Screamer. We've got uh, it all set up in here. We'll show you the inside and what it looks like in a minute, but uh, we gotta go ahead and run another test here. So let's go ahead and run this test, make sure everything's still running right, and then we can set up our price for the first couple of people, and then we'll probably have to redo it once we get more people and real results in. All right, results coming in. Everything's still looking good, so that looks good. Max speed is 78 miles an hour, biggest drop is 61 meters, average speed is 28 miles an hour, variation De is 93.8 seconds. Alright, so our prestige did go up a whole lot, 1322. So let's go ahead and divide that by 35. We're at $37. We'll do $37.50. Let's go ahead and open this thing up. Take a minute for guests to actually get way down here, but let's go ahead and see if we have what our management is looking like. So our research is done. Let's go ahead and do those. Smashing the Atom. We got the Runaway Coaster. And then we got the Backbone of the West. That's the train. Let's see what else research we have in here. A cleaner, brighter future. We'll go ahead and do this one. A twist and coaster technology. That one sounds like a fun one. And let's do another roller coaster right here. A vintage cheese. I'm guessing this is going to be like the mouse run roller coaster. All right, so we're getting guests coming heading this way to the roller coaster. We need to rename it up here. Now I will have this roller coaster up on the Steam Workshop. So be on a lookout for that. I'll have the link down in the description below. Now I'll still be doing some more updates to it, but this is just the beginning part of it. I uh, don't plan on doing anything with the actual ride itself. It's just going to be more decorations. So we'll do a reveal for the inside here in a minute. So be on a lookout for that. But let's go ahead and add a couple more rides over here to get with our space theme. We have this one here, which is the looper. I think this will actually look pretty good because it's spaceships on it. So we can add this one over here to it. See where we can find a good place for it. Maybe right here out in front. Alright, let me go ahead and uh, set up the lines for this and everything. Alright, so this is what we're going to have the decorations for this one so far. Again, once we add more stuff, it's going to add more to it, but we do have 100%. So let's go ahead and get the money. We're at 988. It's actually pretty good score for that. So let's go ahead and add this up here. 988 divided by 35 is going to be $28. Go ahead and start this sucker up. Now I'm going to need to go ahead and get some trash cans and stuff down here so we're gonna need to staff some of this down here so this is the only little area that we have right now so i don't think we need one janitor one mechanic so he's just gonna work on this let me go ahead and get that stuff set up here and then we're also give us a security guard over here so we still have the bathroom and stuff over here 
So add some benches and stuff like that. All right, I think that's good. So we got our two rides here over for this section. So our sci-fi area does look pretty good. I like the ship and everything that we got going on with that. All right, so we have our thrill ride. So now we need a gentle ride. So let's come through here and look at some of those. We have this one right here. I say that looks sci-fi to me. So let's go ahead and uh, add this one into this. Looks like they come in in a couple different spots. I think it raises up this way. So let's add it right up in this area. So we finished the decorations here, got it all set up, and did our ticket price. So our prestige was six fifty-one divided by thirty-five, came out to eighteen fifty, rounded down. So uh, we'll start getting people coming into there also. So this is a good start to our sci-fi theme over here. I think we did this one at the right start. So this is going to come down this way and this way, depending on how many I want to put over here. But I think it all kind of goes good together. So I need to come back through and do some lights and stuff like that so we can get some night pictures to see what it looks like at night. But let's go ahead and uh, ride this ride here.
So that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Be on the lookout for more updates to this roller coaster plus our phase two area. So I hope you enjoyed the ride. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep the park alive. We'll see you next time.